The, the next book came out of the present in a way that I don't think any of, though all our work, and I've tried to say the black book came out of the present too, but, but this really came out of the present. History was under attack. It was, it was the, 19, um, the 1980s and 90s, and we were being attacked mercilessly. Merciless, lustlessly. Um, now, who is we? The historians, professors of, professors of the Contemporary University. Um, and of course, the great attack, the attack that uh, really pushed me into the fray was, was um, Alan Bloom, so the, the Closing of the American Mind. Good title, which I would have used myself, in fact. The Closing of the American Mind, uh, which sold 800,000 copies in hardback, and, and I don't know how many copies it sold in paperback since it's been published in paperback. And it was a vicious attack on the academia. It was a vicious attack on modernity. It was a vicious attack, and a, and a wrong-headed attack, I think, on uh, contemporary culture. Uh, you know, once young people put it, once young people put on the uh, Walkman, uh, they take it off their room forever. It's, it was the one sip of beer in the Prohibitionist era. You know, one sip of beer and you're through. Uh, one long uh, inhale of the reefer and you're dead. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so he saw culture as, uh, in other words, it was an anti-democratic book. He saw culture as having gone to the dogs. The universities as uh, having lost their sense of what was important. The classics, Western culture, Western culture with a capital W, uh, w was once the center of uh, things and had a loss. Now, it's interesting. My anger at, at this attack was that I saw it as wrongheaded, and I, I, I saw the university as a wonderful place, uh, in, encompassing increasing numbers of kids who never would have gone to a university earlier than. I mean, it was changing in front of our eyes. It was coming black and brown and yellow and male and female and just, and older people had chances to come now. I just thought it was one of the most exciting places to be. I was so happy that I had chosen to spend my life in this milieu. Uh, I was so charged by it. And this guy comes along, but it wasn't him alone. He was not, he, he was not esoteric. Uh, it was uh, Lynn Cheney, who was the head of the National Endowment for the Humanities. So many people were attacking the university this way that it began to upset me. Now, my upset came from the fact that I thought the university was a wonderful place, uh, full of intellectuality, full of excitement, full of growth. Uh, not because I thought what they were saying was wrong, that once American culture was based on the classic and once Western Civ was the heart of it, I thought, yeah, that's probably right, but so what? But so I began, I decided to try to answer Bloom and, and his ilk. Um, and I discovered they were completely wrong. Uh, classics were not what they said classics. Well, when the American higher ed system of higher education was based, rooted in the classics, classics were a grammatical thing. To teach kids both grammar and grammar, like mathematics itself, was a form of teaching you how to think. It was a logical form of thinking. They didn't really teach them Latin and Greek in order so they could ennoble themselves. I mean, that was there, but they, you, you have to read the kids themselves. We have a record of these young people in the, in the late 18th, early 19th century universities. They hated these courses because they, they were rote, they were mnemonic courses. You, know, you, you memorize now, things. Now, what were your sources for that? Oh, well. How, what the kids oh, were it's all over the place, I and mean, it's hard to avoid. They, they talk about it. They wrote memoirs. They wrote letters. They, uh, it's in early histories of education. It's not that people didn't know this. Uh, these guys were distorting. Uh, the, you know, they were saying that classics were something in the early 19th century that classics were not. Mm -hmm. Classics were tools uh, to create the, the thinking mind, as mathematics was a tool to create the thinking mind. There was no modern education. The kids were not taught to read modern languages. They were not taught history. Uh, history was Roman and Greek history. Um, science was, was pre-laboratory science. But, so it's, it's just that they're wrong. They were wrong. They remained wrong. So I wrote a book. And My book sold 20,000 copies where uh, Bloom sold 800,000. <laughs> Nevertheless, it was important for me to write that book. I felt the call.